Hi everyone, this is Paul Casey. Welcome to the Kempo Minute. We'll be discussing Kempo, principles, concepts, teachings, sometimes topical subjects, and we hope that you will like this page, subscribe to this page, and share. We look forward to seeing you at the Kempo Minute. Thank you. Let, let, the, let's uh, have a Kempo uh, conversation, can we? Yeah. Okay, is this going to get messy? <laughs> Uh, yeah, it could, but again, we're trying to stimulate conversation. We're trying to get people engaged. It's, it's not about pointing the fingers as anybody, but l let's be honest, people. Kempo is fractionalized. Everybody's in their own little tribes. Everybody's doing their own little things. And to a big degree, I get it. Okay. I get it. They don't want to play politics. They don't want to do all this. They don't want to do all that. I get it. But you know, this is one thing that I say all the time and you, you hear me say this. And, and again, it, it ruffles a feather. I'm sorry. You know, you got to ask yourself, what is it? Is it about your ego or is it about the art? Do you have to be a 10th degree black belt to be a leader? No. no. You can be a leader just for a child. You can be a leader in your relationship with somebody you love that they lean on you when they have doubt or fear. And we've talked about that. You know, you remember should, the leader steps up and says, we need to act and I'm going to act. Yeah. And this is based You're on these circumstances right now. You have to set an example. That's one thing a leader definitely has to do. He has to set an example. You don't try to play games with somebody. You don't just flaunt it in another people's face and say, look at me. I did something you didn't expect. That was foolish. You should set your principles and character. They're non-negotiable. Remember that. Non-negotiable mm -hmm. as your character. Your reputation, you can try to protect it as best as you can. But third parties will always attack it. Because they will do an emotional attack. Well, what was the they will first not attack Trejo you lesson? on logic. They'll attack you on an emotional thing. I don't like your glasses, Zach. I don't like the hat you got. You know? Why? That's emotional. That's You're attacking you on a personal basis. Am I attacking you on, on what you said? No, because that's probably out of my league or my pay grade or my ability. But in this world, you can elevate yourself and get your pay grade up. You can elevate your status so you're in a different league. And, and you can better yourself by strength in knowing, by education, by knowledge. So that is a leadership. Now, going to what you said about 10th degree. I always think of this. And I see this is, this is not just limited to Kempo. This is true in the world. We are so status conscious. We got to have the yes. right car. We got to have the right girlfriend or husband. Right we look. Job. We got to look the right way. We're constantly witchy women. They spend the most profitable industry in the world is cosmetics. And that's in America. They're so preoccupied with retaining their youth. Yet they use young models that are in their teens for older women to say, oh, you can look like this too. Well, you this know? is what you're supposed to look like. Yeah. yeah not was, all people yeah. are built the same. So it's and, just and in reality. We, it's a false sense. It's a false truth. Because at the end of the day, when you take all that goop off your sail and you look in the mirror, the truth reveals itself. So, so you're talking about substance. Absolutely. And, and you look at somebody. Uh, now let's relate to the martial arts. You see somebody with a high rank out on the belt, on the mat. And you look at them and they parade around and look at me. I'm wearing this rank. Well, if you earned it, you deserve it. But you will always be challenged. OK, absolutely. And so I asked those folks to come on this on this podcast, this forum, comment and, and actually tell us what we need to know that will help us to understand your position. OK, let's start a conversation. Let's let's yeah, talk. Absolutely. Let's discuss it. You're not going to like everything I'm going to say. I'm not going to like everything you're going to say, vice versa. But let's start talking about it. Let's bring the community together. I will. I will sum this up now a little bit. You go to a university, which I brought up before, an accredited school. Say it is Harvard, Oxford. Uh, you want to go to USC, Stanford, Berkeley. Those are higher learning institutes that are very well respected, cost a lot of money. They take the cream of the cream, okay? The best of the best. And they turn out the minds of the future, which is our greatest resource. We have those people in the martial arts, too. 100%. Yes, we need to, to understand that. Now, I am not going to challenge anybody that wears a rake. And I'll say no, that's that. Not what, that's that's, that's not, not what this is about. That's no, not it's what not. this is about. Mm -hmm. 
But I'm not have, pointing the finger at you or you right. or you. But make sure you're it's from an accredited person. And that could be a group of people. You know, um, when you get to the 10th degree black belt, unless the organization actually promotes those 10th degrees there, which some people don't do that because they think of it as being taboo. Remember, to wear the senior master of the arts, Mr. Parker points that out in volume two of Infinite Insights, page 10. He calls it senior master of the arts. And by the way, he does give a road to how you can attain that. He so does. Easy. Now, I, I know for a long time, a lot of people were saying, you know, ninth is the high it, sh it should be. But Mr. Parker does write it out specifically in Infinite Insights that he provides a way to, for people to do that. He actually, from my understanding, from the conversations I've had with many seniors, not one, not two, many. And if you don't believe me, go to my sites and you can see the videos in the past. They all said it's not about the rank. It's about the ability to learn the system and now to share it with future generations so it can continue to grow. Now the analogy, you go to USC. I'm just going to pick them because that's Southern California. And that was a very prestigious school. I graduated from California State University of Los Angeles, okay, in my degrees, all right? There's also UCLA and there's others, okay, that are credited through the state, all right? The point is at the end of the of that, of that particular criteria that is there are the curriculum you receive a diploma acknowledging your successfully complete it doesn't mean you're an expert it just means you completed what the professors wanted you to do so you get your bachelor's degree then you enter into a master's degree and i said that before the mastery a comment by ed parker and mm -hmm. uh and you get your master's degree four years later you write your thesis. Parker, uh, 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 you know, related tempo to that. And, you know, when you think about it, he did not use, he did not use Japanese terms at all. He used no. American terms. And those terms, and I'm going to, right now, I'm going to read them all succinctly to you. They are simple here. He says, obviously, you have a junior instructor at first. A associate instructor at second, a head instructor at third. Okay, he's using Western terms. A, a <coughs> senior instructor at fourth, a associate professor, which is what Mr. Carter is, at fifth. And when I was coming up, a fifth degree was a badass dude. He was a badass was a, was, dude. Was, was a, a big thing when I when I was coming in. That was that was pretty special to see a fifth. Uh huh. You have a professor at six, a senior professor at seven. Now you're into the master's portion, the high or end of, of the ranking of the 10th. And you have what? Associate master of the arts, a master of the arts at ninth, and a senior master of the 10th. The only thing he made sure that he reserved and that he wanted to be, be remembered for, that he was the founder of this system. And that's yeah. why he is called the founding grandmaster of American Kempo the father of American Kempo. Because why? He brought it from islands and it came to the mainland and others followed suit. And they all have shown and spoken to me how much they appreciate Ed Parker's contributions and how he opened the doors for everyone. From Kaj Kempo, Lima Lama, Shaolin, Hawaiian, you name it. Tracy, they all look at him and say that. I hope that people don't get caught up in just the glory of a painted vehicle or a job title, you need to work through that and take it to the next level. You don't want to follow into the footsteps of Icarus, the famous great Greek story where he believed he was a god. And Apollo loved him dearly. And the people imprisoned him because it was blasphemy for him to think he was a god. So he said, I will be able to fly and touch the sun. So he built wax wings and he put feathers on them and he started to fly. And as he left the imprisonment and he got higher and higher, he thought he was more powerful and more and more godly like until he got too close to touch the sun and he fell to his death. The moment of truth was reality. That is what's going to happen. The belt rank 
The certificate is, is important, and I applaud anyone that receives that. I think it's an, a great accomplishment that somebody said, you have received this. But remember, it's it a wonderful a achievement. Yeah, it's about you. Now, can you walk the walk? And I'm not talking about somebody that can beat the crap out of everybody. There's guys that are not even ranked that can do that. There's some very mm -hmm. vicious people. I hate to get in the ring with Mike Tyson. You know what? Unless I got lucky and blew out his leg and his nuts and his eye, that's <laughs> one, one shot, man. I'm going to have it. Then it runs fast like can out of me. Okay? Because yeah. if he got me, he'd beat the crap out of me and bite the other ear off. <laughs> So that's the point, okay? Let's not get caught up on that. I, I heard Mr. Parker explain how he took his 10th in Pasadena. I, I heard him tell about what he envisioned for high-ranking belts like that. He wanted a table of them. It never came to fruition, okay? There was only one founder. But remember, every school that graduates somebody with a PhD, that's now a PhD from that university. Did the school limit them? No. They recognized him and applaud them. And that furthers the arts, the educational process. We need to do this. It's a constant renewal process for us. And think okay. about how many people have been, say, the commander in chief. This is an, an analogy that uh, senior master of the arts can answer use from Washington to the president, uh, the present president, commander in chief. Every one of them is the guy in charge for a time being, and then a next person comes in and rec is recognized. But the founder is always the founder, okay? Yes. And that will always live. And I think Parker would be applauding the idea that we further the education and we grow by communicating, but not by shutting people off and being negative. Your final thoughts, and we'll end this. Uh, yeah, I, I agree uh, it's snowing outside right now. My goodness, I agree with uh, everything you're saying. And uh, you know, but, you know, <laughs> <That's> the <laughs> first. <laughs> well, yeah, I mean, you know, but there is a definite difference between being a senior in the art and being a, a, a leader in the art. You can be both, but they can be separate from one another. Well, Jimmy, absolutely, means in time in the arts. Absolutely. And and should those gentlemen or and women be uh, respected? I think absolutely. They have knowledge. They have history. And sometimes it isn't so much the physical, but they, they have lessons to be imparted on us. And, and we need to revere that. I think a lot of times uh, people push that away. Now, do people get caught up in rank? Absolutely. A hundred percent. And it's not just in Kempo. It's yeah. in all the arts. Uh, I mentioned that earlier, Dr. Supreme Grandmaster. That was actually a Taekwondo person that did this. Okay, so it, it can happen in any arts. And, of course, I, this is the first case of that. I've heard it many times in, in uh, other instances, too, with other people. You know, but to be a leader, you need to really step out to the front. You need to set an example. You need to bring people together. And you need to be willing to communicate people. And it's not going to be something – that everybody's going to want to hear. Remember, Mr. Parker was a rebel in his time, okay? But he saw the vision, and he brought people together, and eventually people started seeing what he had to offer and what he was trying to accomplish, and that brought more people together. But I think as 30 years now that Mr. Parker's been gone, we've moved away from that. We need to find a way to come together. We need to find a way to bridge gaps, because it isn't about us. It's about the art. It's about the art that our founder left us, okay? So we need to set that example, and we need to bring it together somehow, some way. And I think it's important uh, what Mr. Casey's done with this uh, pod series and educational series is, is trying to bring us together, trying to communicate. And, and, and please ask questions. Come on to Kimpo Karate Online, ask questions. You know, jump on here, ask questions. Let's find a way to get together and educate all of us. None of us have all the answers, but you know what? We're willing to talk. Now, I know Mr. Casey knows this. We talk to many seniors all the time, and <laughs> it gets heated, guys, you know, but it's fun. It's challenging. We challenge each other. Just like we get out and we get on the mat, we challenge each other. What are we trying to do? We're trying to get better. We're not staying stagnant, and that's very important, and that's what we're trying to do here. There are two paths here. There's the one to rank. And there's one to leadership. Mr. Parker provided for both. He has a system from white to fifth degree black belt laid out in his American Kempo. 
And you have it through the techniques, through the forms, through the belt pledges, through terminology, et cetera, et cetera. Then when you get to fifth degree, which is a revision of what he originally had in 1962, everything past that was your contributions of giving back to the art. And at certain points, you then get to a certain rank. And then at that point, he's not here to give this to you. Your peers will recognize you for that rank of senior master of the arts. Now, you may go Absolutely. off and do your own thing and, and you become your grandmaster in your system. But don't forget the principles and concepts and the purpose of why you studied Ed Parker Kempo, if that's what you're into. The other thing is anyone can be a leader if you choose to. But you have to tell yourself mindset, body, and the spirit of what drives you. And you know what? I would prefer to be a leader than anything else, to be able to open a door for somebody. And the key for me Change is their life. Like, yeah, the key for me is something I, I, I came up with a long time ago. I was inspired by my little girl. Uh, she lives through me every day with her inspiration. And I say the greatest gift one can ever have is to inspire another to their personal greatness. So today, be great. It's your moment. Embrace it and share it and make somebody else great too. Thank you, Mr. Carter. That was a great discussion. Folks, if you like this, please, you know, like our, our, our post, subscribe to it, share with others. And we look forward to seeing you at the next Kempo Karate Hall of Fame educational video series. Uh, we're going to be doing this for a while with Mr. Carter. And I thank you so much. With no further ado, salute. So thank you for watching the Kempo Minute. We hope you enjoy it and please come back and visit us again. Thank you very much.